Hi, David Bizard here, and you are watching Power Tech 10. In this episode, and that would be episode 38, uh, we're going to look at port filling. This is a subject that's rarely covered in uh, any uh, videos I've seen. I have to say that there's a lot of power to be had by knowing which port's too big and where to fill them. Uh, let's look at an example here so that you can see the potential. The 2 liter Pinto engine. And uh, getting power from that engine was uh, always somewhat difficult in as much as around about 200 horsepower, it's like everybody ran into a brick wall. Well, part of that brick wall is that the intake ports are too big. Now, it is possible to get a 1600 Pinto engine from England, take the head off and use it on your two liter engine. The ports are smaller, so that you've got a better um, starting point there. However, they're hard to come by now. One of the things that uh, my partner David Anton and I did with Pinto engines way back was to um, reshape the intake ports. Basically, when we um, modified the port, we cut the cross-sectional area by about 25, 20 to 25 percent, all of it on the bottom. That resulted in a power increase from 198 horsepower to 216, plus more torque, plus about five or 600 RPM more usable rev range. How did that work out? Well, with a driver who'd never won a race, in a car that was half the front end of one car and half the rear end of another, he went from 11th spot on the grid to almost lapping the current champion. But what about on a B8? Well, there's power to be had from small block and big blocks. I'm going to show them some ports I've done on a big block Chevy and they're worth almost 40 horsepower. They're also worth about 40 foot pounds of torque and about another seven or 800 RPM at the top end of usable RPM. The power doesn't go like that, it goes like this. So you shift much later. Result is it looks like a bigger increase in power than it really is. A friend of mine that I did a pair of heads like this for went almost as fast with out the nitrous as he did with a 150 horsepower nitrous kit he was only about a couple of tenths slower and a few miles an hour slower so the advantage is equal to about a 100 horsepower nitrous kit and as for small block chevy well we did some port filling on that, both on the intake and the uh, the intake port and the intake manifold. The results were, I'd say, close to spectacular. Overall, we must have picked up 60 horsepower on a, a, a 383 race engine. Anyway, what I'm going to show you here is how to do port filling and uh, you know, what's involved, the best way to do it, and so on and so forth. So. This is what you get in Goodson's Port Reshaping Kit. It consists of two cans of epoxy, part A and part B, some stirrers, instructions, and a pair of rubber gloves to protect your hands. This is for heavy duty filling. If you're going to do just light filling, then I recommend the two part JB Weld. Uh, there's one grade you can get that sets up and is workable in about an hour. And that's good if you're in a hurry. Unless it's a blazing hot day, it's a good idea to warm the Goodson uh, um, filler up a, a little on the radiator. Blood temperature is about it. You may have to put the radiator on low and leave it on there for a few hours. 
before you put the, this filler on the radiator, just crack the lids so that they can breathe. Now I'm mixing this stuff up in a bowl to show you why you shouldn't. This stuff is so viscous, even when warmed up, that the edges of the bowl get absolutely covered and you've got nothing to hold on to. Your best plan is to use a piece of plastic sheeting or cardboard, which is easily renewable. Well, here we are with cardboard. You'll see that the mixing is much easier. An early move is to mark out the limits of your port. I'm using a vernier height gauge here, but you could do this with a regular uh, scriber and uh, scribing block. Right, so here we go. This is so that we don't fill the port any more than we have to, but we make sure we have enough for it to clean up. Here's our ports roughed out to pretty close limits to our port layout. Now remember, this is the floor and we're going to fill it to this line here. So it's going to have about a half an inch, maybe a bit more of filling. Right now, you may be a little concerned, as I was when I first started doing this, that this filling may break loose. We have a fix for that. Let me show you. Your first move is to look for a part of the port adjacent to the area you're filling that is solid all the way through to the port and is not a gasket face. On a big block there's plenty of room for that. And what we're going to do is center pop this and drill three or four holes. Right, so we're going to make those holes fairly large, almost coupling up to each other, and they will act as a key. The bigger the holes are, to an extent, the better. Last operation on the underside is to give them a good big countersink like this so that there's a, a plenty of, of material keying the uh, uh, filler in. Using a cutter like this or something similar, cut the inside of the ports. This is one of those cases here where the uglier it is, the better. Now here's a move that if you're doing a heavy fill, as we are, about half an inch, will save you a lot of trouble. What we're going to do is glue this just a little above our scribe line, which you should still be able to, you might not see it in this shot, but you should still be able to see it in uh, reality. So we're gonna do a fast glue, fast set glue on that. Put something down underneath the uh, part you're going to glue and uh, apply the, this fast glue to both faces like so. And then hold it in position for a while. Here we are with the head ready. To do our port filling. If this isn't holding as strong as you'd like with the uh, super glue, 
then JB Weld will actually hold stronger, but this is on there pretty good. Well, here's our port ready for filling. It's a good idea to steady the piece of wood that's up against the uh, port there. Now I'm going to show you something here that you can do with this filler. And that's not really a practical idea with any other type of filler. We're going to form this by hand. The way to do this is to use some warm water, not cold, because that will uh, make it harder to uh, form, right? And let's get that, cut that down to size there. Now, sometimes you may have to dip this into the filler to uh, get it to uh, form, but you can get most of it with your fingers. Right, now we want a radius up against that corner, so let's just provisionally form that. Several things I want to uh, mention here. Do not grind this port filler stuff without a mask. I am using a very powerful downdraft bench here, and you, you can't see it here, but pretty much 99% of the dust has gone into there, maybe more. However, I'm not taking any chances. This here, I believe, is quite carcinogenic in dust form. Don't breathe it in you'll only be puking it up the next day. The other thing is, even though it's dust, still wear glasses. Though it's hardly finished, you can see how I'm lining up the outside of this port. What I've done is I've just cut this surface here until the wood just shows, right? I've still got about a 32nd of an inch there to come out, but that gives me a good guideline. When you cut into the pushrod hole, don't try and do a minimal cut. You're going to fill that area anyway, so you need it to key in on the edges. That means chamfering off the port side. This view here of how big the hole is should give you an idea of what to cut. A point to absolutely note when you're uh, doing these pushrod holes is to make sure you have the proper game plan. Now you'll notice that I'm wetting this stick to smooth this off. My game plan here for a quarter uh, is to have a quarter inch of push rod offset, right? I'm enlarging the ports at the top so that they just break into the existing push rod holes. So I'm widening those about, oh, about 200 thousands. Now you can't do this with, with the um, JB Weld, right? You can smooth it all out and try and do as neat a job as possible on this. Now I'm about to finish that one. Here's the shot before the port was cut. Look and see how much of the port is shadowed on the left hand side of the guy. Here's the same port from the same uh, angle. Now see how much the shadow has been removed. I'd like to show you this port being ground, but it's just not possible for me to get in there at the same time that I can show you anything significant. 
So let me tell you what's going on here. Let's move in uh, on the uh, angled side of the port first. The hard bit is getting this and this smooth because this is soft and this isn't. So you have to very carefully concentrate on the aluminum part and only lightly touch this, otherwise this will sink. Now the other thing that we've got to take care of is this radius here and this area here is very important. So this is where you focus your attention on a nice curve into there. When you first start off grinding, Put the grinding wheel or the emery roll in straight. Do not start tipping it right away. You need this leading edge here for about an eighth to a quarter of an inch in to be straight in. Then start gently turning it. Let's take a look from a different angle. Here you can see just how much the port is reduced in size as it goes in. It stays pretty much the same height all the way in except it gets a lot wider now let's see what that did on the flow bench as was stated previously in one of our notations is all this port filling worth it well judge for yourself we'll go through the flow figures now what you're looking at here is not just a comparison of one regular 24 degree head versus another. I thought to show you how good this uh, port filling could be was to compare it with one of the best, how shall I say, near conventional heads. This is an SR20, a Brodex SR20 CNC machined head. This was one designed by Slick Rick about 10 years ago and it works very well. It has a 2.4 intake valve compared with our 2.3 intake valve and the port cross-sectional area is 3.88 square inches compared with 3.58 of ours. So we're 0.3 of a square inch smaller cross-sectional area of the port. Now you'll notice it's better down here that's because of the seat cutting techniques that we teach at the school. What we're looking at here is the efficiency of the ports. Now remember our port is smaller and we have an intake valve which is almost 10% smaller. But our high efficiency seat profiles gives us this very high discharge coefficient here compared with the conventional seat here. Now, as we come down here, it becomes port. This is our port, and it's superior in terms of flow efficiency. Now, let's look at that in terms of port velocity and see how that comes out. You can see with our smaller cross-sectional area port, we are actually up on port velocity over the SR20. Now one of the reasons the SR20 works very well is in turn its port velocity is typically up 30 to 40 uh, feet per second in this area up here compared with a regular 24 degree head. Well our 24 degree head with the filled port beats even that. We are past the magic 300 feet per second at 900 lift. Last on the list is the port energy density. Now you can look at this as the equivalent in terms of port speak as the brake specific fuel consumption of an engine. This is the uh, efficiency uh, with which the port is delivering air to the engine in terms of generating power. We want flow and port velocity and this looks at the port energy uh, that it develops per that's foot pounds per square inch of valve per foot length of port. You'll notice our port energy 
density beats the SR20. How does it do on the dyno? Well, we are not quite as good as the SR20 in terms of horsepower with this head, but, but ours can get better. Now, the thing is, is how much less are we? We're about 20 horsepower down compared with a regular good 24 degree head being pretty close to 100 horsepower down. So we've made a big improvement in our cylinder head. Oh, by the way, we'll match the SR20 foot pounds most of the time and often beat it. So there's a point in our favor. Well, that about wraps up our um, uh, port filling uh, video. But having said that, this isn't going to be the last time you'll see or hear me talking about port filling. It plays a very important part in any cylinder head that you really want to fine tune. Well, fine tune might be uh, dismissing it too lightly. There is a lot of horsepower to be had simply from the fact that most ports are convenience ports. That is, they're put there because that's convenient for hood height, manifold location, etc., etc. When you start doing port filling, you start to remove that restriction. And that's where it pays off. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and put us on your notifying list. Thank you.